The snow crunched with every step taken, but the forest remained silent otherwise, and the weight of snow covering the tree branches and blanketing over the Siberian forest provided Alia with a sense of safety. The cool, crisp air filled her lungs, and for just a moment, it felt like she was in some other more magical place. She didn't even care about their task at hand, checking the snares for trap game. They could have nothing for Christmas dinner for all she cared, just as long as she could continue to luxuriate in this profound freedom. But then the silence was broken, and she was reminded of just how much this day was like any other. Hello? Are you even paying attention? Alia snapped out of it. Her cousin Kira interrupted her brief moment of peace. This was far from fairy tale. Come, follow me. Let's find some fruit for pie. Perhaps there are cherries or plums off the trail. We shouldn't. Baba Yaga roams these parts of the forest, Alia pleaded. God, Alia. Kira snorted in exasperation. I know you still look like a baby, but that doesn't mean you have to act like it. Thirteen is too old to still believe in Baba Yaga. I bet you still believe in Santa. They kept walking as Kira complained, pushing through the underbush and ducking under stray tree branches. Alia tried to defend herself, even though she knew it would only make Kira more cruel. Father swears that she exists, she protested, and he is much older than the two of us combined. He says if we wander too far from the village, she'll lure us away and eat us. Kira sighed. It was a sound that Alia heard a thousand times and it always made her clench her teeth. You know what, little duckling? Kira stopped walking and rounded on her companion. Your father is a drunk who beats you like a dog and doesn't have two coins to rub together. I bet you're not even getting any Christmas presents this year. Maybe if you pray hard enough, you'll one day find a man who will tolerate you enough to save you from your father. Rather than listening to his nonsense. Someone like my dear Dimitri. Alia remained silent as usual. Besides, Kira continued, why should I be afraid of some old hag that lurks in the forest, looking for naughty children to boil alive? I'm young, beautiful, and strong. That crone should be afraid of me, right? Kira looked at Alia, waiting for a response. When she didn't get one, she then grabbed the base of Alia's braid and jerked her towards the ground. Pain erupted in Alia's scalp, and she couldn't stop the cry that escaped her lips. For a moment, she really feared for her life. But the hand was gone as soon as it appeared. Kira had released her. Alia stared at her cousin's horrified expression she wasn't even looking at Alia anymore. Her eyes were focused on something just over her shoulder. Her lips were parted, and her eyes were glassy, mesmerized by whatever it was she could see. Alia was gripped by fear, but she forced herself to turn around. It was a woman, or at least it had the body of a woman. She was old, hunched over herself, frail, skinny limbs, drowning in a dark woolen cloak. What little skin Alia could see was clearly wrinkled and impossibly pale. But that wasn't what held Alia's attention. The white of her face stood in stark contrast to the dark blood running down her chin. It was flowing, dripping appearing inky black where it landed on the snow. She reached out to the girls with one arm, a long-fingered hand appearing from the folds of her clothes, gesturing to follow her. She turned and began to fly away. And follow it they did, 
Kira first, still with a vacant expression, unable to speak and moving like a marionette, being controlled from above. Alia was only a few steps behind. She didn't understand what she was feeling. It was absurd that her cousin could make her feel terrified almost every day, while this old woman who walked barefoot and blood-soaked through the tundra made her feel calm, welcomed. They broke through the forest and a house stood tall in front of them, surrounded by a fence made of human bones and skulls. It was barely more than a hut. But it raised up high, sitting on two enormous chicken legs. They moved like living things, swaying with the wind. The old woman stopped in front of it and the house bent its knees, lowering itself gracefully to the ground. It tilted forward to hit the earth with a soft thud. And the woman got out of her floating vehicle and reached for the doorknob. She held the door open, a soft smile on her face, watching the girls file inside. As soon as the door clicked shut behind them, the legs thrust the house back into the air. Alia grabbed onto the wall to try and steady herself as the floor lurched, and the shock of it brought her back to her wits enough to wonder what she was really doing there. I have a gift for you, child. The woman's lips never moved, but Alia could hear her voice plain as day, and the sound of it was like warm honey pouring over her. Your gift is the chance to give your cousin exactly what she deserves. It's time to show her the consequences of her fiendish behavior. Alia nodded, her thoughts blank. Baba Yaga was right. She had enough. A long knife appeared suddenly in Alia's hand. Kira was standing in front of her, still in a trance, unseeing and unmoving, held up by Baba Yaga's hand, gripping the back of her neck. Go on. It felt like the most natural thing in the world to slide the blade in between Kira's ribs. The flesh gave way like butter. Kira remained still in Baba's hand, her only reaction a small gasp. It still felt natural when Baba Yaga reached around from behind Kira and dug her fingers into the wound. She tugged at the skin, tearing it further, creating a yawning gash that let blood spill out in a hot gush. She kept pulling, impossibly strong, rending flesh and cracking ribs until Kira's heart was exposed. It was still beating. Then she took a bite, and she offered the rest to Alia. Eat it, child, and you'll become powerful like me. You can stay with me here. Away from your wicked family. <laughs> At that moment, Alia felt a strange connection to Baba Yaga. She didn't see a monster before her, but a motherly figure, something she longed for all her life. Kira's blood was thick and salty on her tongue. The flesh of her heart was tough, something she had to rip into with her teeth like a wild thing. Shredded muscle pumped gush upon gush of blood into Alia's mouth. It filled her belly, warming her from the inside out. By the time she was done, it felt like she had absorbed Kira's very essence. The corpse fell to the floor with a wet thud when Baba Yaga released it. She grinned at Alia, who grinned back. Their face is now a mirror image of bright eyes and blood-soaked teeth. Alia felt a feral laugh bubble up from within her and made no effort to hold it in. She was finally safe, finally free, and it felt delicious. Merry Christmas, my dear. Now, hurry, child. 
There are many, many others that we can save.